So Anna, I'm going to just turn it over to you. Great, hi everybody. Just give me one second here. Okay, metro breakdowns, but here we are. So welcome in everyone, it's so great to see you. Um, good morning officially and good afternoon and good evening and welcome to the finissage of the Public Arts Garage. We are coming to you live from Concordia University's Four Space, which is located on unceded indigenous lands in Jajage, Montreal. Um, at Four Space, we work to connect you to the classroom activities, initiatives, research projects, and dialogues that are happening across the university. So thank you so much for joining us live here in person today and online for the final presentations of the International and Collaborative Graduate Course on Art in Public Space. As you already know, we're in meeting mode. We are recording. We are also live streaming the session to YouTube. I'll put that link in the chat in a second. Um, so please use the chat for comments and reflections, or better yet, just do as you have done by turning on your video, raising a hand, and we'll call on you to jump in and participate. So I guess now it's my pleasure to pass it over to your profs, Patrick Leroux and Sylvie Van Herimont. Over to you. Thank you, Anna. Um, I really want to thank everybody from Fourth Space for being so incredibly supportive. And um, I feel, we, you know, on behalf of everyone, thank you. Um, we feel very privileged to have your support and uh, the documentation you've provided. I'm going to just now turn it over to Martine. Do we have Martine in Europe? Switch. It's still on so, the way. And it here it's ah, okay. Do, do you hear me? Can, can everybody hear me well? We can hear you. All right. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. I'm really happy to be here in the virtual Montreal. And, and yeah, Patrick, um, it looks also very nice where you are, uh, guess in your own backyard. Or <laughs> and uh, yeah, so um, welcome everybody here in uh, virtual Weimar. We are sitting together in a room for the first time. So you see that we have like a little bit um, different setup. We will also have some plants later. They are waiting outside the parliament of the plants. They will join us also and listen today. Yeah, so, so um, yeah, thank you very much. Um, I just um, wanted to um, shortly maybe, maybe outline the presentations for today. We have scheduled um, two uh, blocks, um, first uh, of four groups and then a block of three groups that will be uh, followed by an intense uh, feedback. Um, everybody who presents will have um, 10 minutes um, to show their work. We will have some uh, live presentations, some hybrid presentations, and some um, presentations of pre-recorded uh, works that have um, taken place in, in public space. Um, yeah, and here is the parliament of the plants uh, coming in. <laughs> yeah, um, so I just have to look at my flow here. Yeah, we, sorry for, for not um, being set up. Uh, I think I would just um, hand over uh, to you, Patrick, maybe to say some introducing uh, words and, and then we can hand over to the first uh, group, right? No, Sylvie already said some uh, words. Okay. Maybe. okay, or we could just it's hand up, it. Yeah. Gre greetings and gratitude, yeah, I think yeah. is the main message yeah. for yeah. the yeah. welcome. Yeah. Oh, and plants. Yeah. <laughs> Would the first light, uh, group already like to um, to share their screens or to share so their video? we have the first group, Victoria. Uh, would you like to introduce your group? The mic is now on. Is that true? Can you hear me? Okay. Okay, with the mic too? Yeah, great. Uh, so there is Elsa Benamuzik, who I believe is in Avignon, um, having been in Paris just a few days ago. 
There's Carolina Garcia, who's attending from Weimar with a group in Weimar. And there is Jose Cortez, who, as you can see, uh, or would have seen, is in another part of the building with us, attending to the library. Before we start, I would like to ask that everyone have their cameras off except for the four of us. Um, I would like to have it in gallery view. In other words, yes, I want it. Be able, we want to be able to see our four screens. Me, Elsa, Jose, and Carolina. Uh, and that also includes if the camera on me can be shut off, there's another sort of room view. If that screen, if that camera could be shut off as well. Great. I mean, if it's possible to turn everyone's cameras off except for us. Carolina, are you in this group? Uh, You're in the first group. Okay. Yes, and if can you hear me better now? I think that's a better sound. Okay, and if it's at all possible for Chrissy uh, Kuratsu to turn your camera off too, that'd be great. Yes. Oh. Dear Carolina, I sent you these pictures thinking I had been to Weimar. In my memory of 12 years ago, this is where my friend Janine brought Christian and I when we went to visit her in Berlin, my first time in Germany. I had met Janine in Montreal during Viva Art Action in 2009. She was here with her collective performer Stamtich to present at the festival. We totally hit it off and she invited me to come to Berlin to bring my work to a space called Kuhl. She took us to visit her former birth home in, in East Germany in the former East Germany, and we met her parents who told us via Janine translating in brief intervals every few sentences what it was like for them when they woke up one morning to discover they were on the wrong side of the wall, and what it was like when the wall finally came down. Then she brought us to Dessau to see the Bauhaus School, which in my recollecting of memories and photos from that time became translated to Weimar really not the same city at all. I remember walking around Berlin with Janine and Christiane thinking how much it reminded me of Montreal. How does a city remind one of another city? What is it that makes it feel familiar? What makes it feel so close to home? There's a certain time of year in Montreal, usually around late May, when I walk around the streets with the scent of apple blossoms and lilacs wafting all around, and I feel like I'm away. I'm not sure where, but I'm no longer here. And it's not uncomfortable, it's like a breath of another place filling the air. And it doesn't make me long to be elsewhere, it just makes me feel like this city is new. Carolina, how did you feel when you arrived in Weimar? Did anything about it remind you of home? 
I've never been. Is there a place you visit when you feel homesick that makes you feel more at home? I remember the first time I traveled abroad prior to the internet and telecommunication fees were so exorbitant as to make phone calls a luxury and only affordable in the case of an emergency. I wrote lots of letters. I waited weeks to receive replies. I have boxes and boxes of them. These dialogues helped to anchor me when I felt agitated, disconnected, alone. These letters were my lifeline, were my home. In solidarity and friendship, Victoria, Montreal, July 6, 2022. <clears throat> Dear Jose, I write this letter to you inside the place I live in Weimar. My room, my home, my secret spot. The address is Rudolf Breitscheidstrasse 1. Quite a difficult name for, for someone who was moving to Germany for the first time. Especially for someone raised in Brasilia, a planet city and used to address with just numbers and letters. But I need to confess that I love how the post mail finds me here by my name, not my flat number. Makes my dwelling more singular. Somehow this small detail helps me to feel part of the city. Here, I feel I belong. I also felt and still feel belonging to Brasilia, but I sense the city wants me to be, to be invisible, quiet on my own. Everything is far, there's a lot of empty spaces and no corners, and we don't see many people walking the streets. Weimar and the 6,800 um, habitants, uh, 68,000 habitants, it's completely different. At the bar on Friday night, you know that guy with blue cap drinking shots was doing his groceries yesterday at 4 p.m. If I remember well, he bought basically pasta, pesto, and some snacks. Brasilia and Weimar are so different from each other, but they also have some similarities. I made a small diagram of my life here and there to help me visualize the contrast. I always wanted to live in a small city, to have a shared um, relation with the space, to recognize faces, to go everywhere by foot or bike, to go to my favorite restaurant and hear, welcome back Carolina, with a huge smile to have friends coming to my window in the middle of the day, to invite someone for ice cream 15 minutes in advance, not two, two weeks, to change the speed of everyday life. If you come to Weimar one day, I hope you also notice how the clouds and the wind moves differently. When this happens, please go to Homish's house in, at Im Park. At this place, I feel I can stop time. After that, you can eat a good shawarma at Dama's restaurant. And if Hossein is there, you can say you are Carolina's friend. I'm sure he, you will get some extra fries. Brasilia inspires me to imagine utopias. Weimar makes me touch the reality. Do you think it's possible to have both feelings in only one city? Maybe this place will be my next destination. But wherever I go, I will always bring Brasilia signs with me to remind me where my start is. And I wonder if you feel or felt your physical presence different when you move to Montreal. Do you feel visible at Mexico City and Montreal? Do you feel that two cities have the knowledge to see you? And I also wonder if we need to feel seen in the city to say this is our home. Maybe we don't. Warm Brazilian hugs, Carolina. Dear Elsa. A few weeks after I moved to Montreal last fall, some newcomer told me this city is a mixture of Brooklyn and Paris. I'm still trying to prove this by myself. By fully, I support cities could be made of small parts of other towns. So as some people from many places, we shape that them constantly and turn them home for the season or lifespan. I was once to Paris 20 years ago, while in college years. I visited for a few days with my childhood friend, Juan, during springtime, maybe. 
we basically walk the city with little plans, but enjoy just getting surprised by it. I can recall some beautiful scenes connected in my mind with a few French films I've watched by then, as well as some romantic and snobbish atmosphere all around. I remember us at night walking along the Sena with a bottle of cheap local red wine and a baguette, getting lost afterwards in the subway and struggling to find, trying to find a public toilet. In the daytime, we also walked to the Louvre Museum. But as soon as we saw the crowd in line, we declined to visit, thinking who needs to be obliged to see artwork hits that already circulate in thousands of Western art history books, standing up and surrounded by tourists for hours. I took several pictures of the trip with my film camera that I still keep somewhere in Mexico. I remember one of Juan posing at the entrance of the Collège de France with some ironic attitude as he was studying philosophy then. It was so much fun. I also remember trying some Gaulois cigarettes as an indexical literature gesture. Juan and I were enthusiasts of Hopscotch, an emblematic novel by Argentinian writer Julio Cortázar taking place in Paris. I think it marked many references to our city walks, like the bridges and other areas where the protagonist looked for a woman who had disappeared. It was a marvelous emotional connection. Although I lived in Brooklyn some years after, I never thought of parties while there, not of hopscotch again. I think I read more Paul Oster then. Have you ever embraced parties shaped from some other artistic perspectives? Have you ever talked to new visitors about their expectations and personal imagination around the city? Is Paris somehow a big metaphor? I visited my native Mexico City two weeks ago, and I brought back a bunch of newspaper that my father steals by daily. I cut out the news about a river in Mexico City drying up while I write this. I will insert it inside a copy of Half Scotch from the Concordia Webster Library, marking a passage I want to share with you so you can have a little reading trip in a quiet place whenever you visit Montreal. Here are the directions to it. Please make your way to the fourth floor of the Western Library. Go to the shelving row 98. Look for the call number PQ7797C7145H661975. Sincerely, Jose. Dear Victoria, I am writing you from the train leading me out of Paris in the lavender and ratatouille scented south. This is the last time I am leaving home to come back to it, unchanged. I mean that the home will remain unchanged. I don't know about me. This is the longest I have stayed in just one place in my adult life. These past few weeks, phoneless, I got to know the city better than ever before. You can see the maps I drew to fill out the gaps in my memory or lack of company. These are maps of a time alone in the unknown. Even though I know this is the end, I couldn't help but add new drawings to my wall or repot the spider plant. This dwelling was built bit by bit in the 12e arrondissement de Paris through memories of late night dinners concocted for friends, new and old, coming and going, judging up our evenings to the sound of the guitar, violin, balafon, mandolin, knives and whisks, pots and salt shakers. My last night in New York, a city which condensed my sense of home at the time, I cooked an insane amount of matzah bowl soup. Sleepless, I cut the vegetables, infused the bouillon with onion, garlic, leek, celery, carrots. I rolled the bowls in my palms, gigantic ones, and infused the whole apartment with the dish the knot in my stomach never let me taste. I left it out on the counter for my roommates who were rooted in America enough to remain there as COVID took over. A lasting sense of having been home. I wonder what my last meal in Vivaldi will be. I am writing you, Victoria, and I wonder, what would yours be? The taste of home, of a home, of a lost home, of your last home. In my bag, I chose to take a copy of Leonard Cohen's Les Perdons Magnifiques to carry a little of your summery Montreal with me. Leonard Cohen's song, famous Blue Rain Coke, coat, is coming back to me. It always does when I write a letter. This time, our past exchanges shed a new light on the following lines. 
I hear that you're building your little house deep in the desert. You're living for nothing now. I hope you're keeping some kind of record. The little houses we build, never mind where, we can't help but keep some kind of record of, can we? Songs and words and tastes, sounds and things. What will it be, the maison de fortune of us all? What record will we keep of our little house of Zoom calls and performances enacted in and in between places that were deserted from any prior connections? Now, the first time I visit Montreal will not be my first time. You will have left some kind of record, which, what will be left? Sincerely, Elsa. Thank you. Thank you, um, Jose, Victoria, Carolina, Elsa. Thank you. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to access your texts if you upload them to the Moodle and um, the, the PAG document. Um, we're going to move to the next. So if you, if you I would just uh, suggest that as you um, we get ready for the next thing. Just everybody, if you want to make some notes about what you've just seen, so that when we have the feedback, we have some a moment to exchange. So the next group to be ready to get ready is Katarzyna Ale. So you're going to need the microphone. So I'm going to just move out of sight. I don't know. Will you need two microphones? So I will just do a very short introduction. Uh, so our creation as research project was developed by Ale Runze, Chrissy and myself. And this presentation is the continuity of a previous one which focused on the theme, the streets are not ours. Now we would like to reflect on and explore the question, what does public mean? And the role of the audience in the public realm. We would like now to present the video, which is a poem in four parts, in four languages, and concludes in one universal language, music. This is a collage of different artistic and symbolic expressions from different locations. The intent is to demonstrate the interplay between the public and the surrounding spaces. Just ha having a little technical um, checkup.
恐惧，使用，合法，共同，注定，拥有，共同拥有，大家，使用权，归属权，第三方，单位，多职务，共同，确认，面对，所有人。公共开仓，公共艺术，欣赏，享受，朝早，人们，街头，行业。The poem is a city filled with streets and sewers, filled with saints, heroes, beggars, madmen, filled with banality and booze, filled with rain and thunder and periods of drought. A poem is a city at war. A poem is a city asking a clock why. A poem is a city burning. A poem is a city on their guns, its barber shops filled with cynical drunks. A poem is a city where gold rides naked through the streets like Lady Godiva, where dogs bark at night and chase away the flock. A poem is a city of poets, most of them quite similar and envious and bitter. A poem is this city now, 50 miles from nowhere, 9.09 in the morning, the taste of liquor and cigarettes, no police, no lovers walking the streets, this poem, this city closing its doors, barricaded, almost empty, mournful without ears, aging without pity, the hard rock mountains, the ocean like a lavender flame, a moon destitute of greatness, a small music from broken windows. A poem is a city, a poem is a nation, a poem is the world. You said, I will go to another land, I will go to another sea. Another city will be found, a better one than this. Every effort of mine is a condemnation of fate. And my heart is, like the corpse, buried. How long will my mind remain in this wasteland? Wherever I turn my eyes, wherever I may look, I see black ruins of my life here, where I spent so many years destroying and wasting. You will find no new lands, you will find no other seas. The city will follow you. You will roam the same streets, and you will age in the same neighborhoods, and you will grow gray in these same houses. Always you will arrive in this city. Do not hope for any other. There is no ship for you, there is no road. As you have destroyed your life here. In this little corner, you have ruined it in the entire world. No hallarás otra tierra ni otro mar. La ciudad irá en ti siempre. Volverás a las mismas calles y en los mismos suburbios llegará tu vejez. En la misma casa encanecerás, pues la ciudad es siempre la misma. Otra no busques, no la hay, ni caminos ni barco para ti. La vida que aquí perdiste la has destruido en toda la tierra.
Letnie popołudnie śpiewa mariacki hejnał. Kobieta w czarnej sukience na środku rynku wkłada wspomnienia do torebki, bo tylko tyle jej zostało. Na tle straganów z kwiatami z uśmiechem pozuje do zdjęcia przed odejściem w ulicę Mikołajską. Mickiewicz to pamięta. Thank you, everyone. Um, Katarzyna, did you want to say something or Runze before we move to the next group? Um, if you want to or Ale? So we used uh, two QR codes uh, in both phases uh, of the project. So the first was, well, in the first one, we had like 15 questions, this one. And the other one had just one that is, um, what is public? That was the question. In this other one, we had like 15, like a big formula. And there you can see also. And this we were planning to have the people, uh, to give the people the possibility to, to draw or answer in, in other ways. So this is something that we're just exploring and, and trying to go deeper. And um, yes, uh, we have lots of answers, some in diverse language, not only in Chinese, but also in English in Spanish and uh, other languages. So we will let you know soon the other the translations but yeah this is mostly what we what we've we've been doing so far thank you sorry so 
uh, for the people in Europe, um, you may not be able to see what um, Ale was showing, but I'm just going to move one thing a little closer to camera. Oh, you are looking at it there? Oh, that's brilliant. Gosh, technology. <laughs> paper? Not paper. <laughs> um, thank you so much. So as we are preparing for group number three, um, did you want to sort of take a little moment to make notes? And then uh, is group number three ready to, to do what they do? Okay, so can you please introduce who your group will be? Thank you. Well, we are group number three. Uh, we are Milena Pereira, Vanessa Ramos Velázquez, and Diego López. We will show a video of the of a new version of the Dream Collector that we did in the first encounter of, of the PAG. This video is uh, like a collage, like a multiple, it has multiple versions of the Dream Collector in different cities in Lima, Sao Paulo, Weimar, and Montreal. So I hope you enjoy it. La coleccionista de sueños de Casina. This is full suitcase. I have millions of dreams. Do you want to share your last night dream with me? I was walking through this square on my way to a new journey. Suddenly, my foot gets stuck on the ground. I appear on the other side of the world in three falls. Finally, we arrive to a very high. Some animal sounds are heard. A yellow spirit runs across my body and stands on my shoulder. I don't remember what it is. And I become weird. We run together. And become one. Like a horse. 
I stick to the ground. Underground voices are heard. They have many things to say, but there is no statue for those above. Then a crowd surrounds me, howling like wolves. But the condor picks me up again. We fly through the rain of color and go back in time as if nothing has happened. I turn around me and everything looks the same. Same buildings, cars, and people. But in the distance, right, I can see one person with a wall. Free and close. But they don't hear. If I turn it on, so that they can hear from the one computer. But you're not here. Yeah, no. There's no audio then. Las caderas son las manos, las rodillas, los pies. Respira, estás como bailando. You are full of dancing. You are in a trap. What do you remember from your dream? Who were you with? Was there a story, a conflict? How did you feel? How do you feel? Por favor, compartilhem algo desse sonho de vocês com Slow down your movement. Breathe. Open your eyes. Please, leave me something on the floor. This is done. And have to drink. Sí, ahorita lo, lo limpiamos, no se preocupe.
Thank you. So Sorry for the technical difficulties. And the rhythm was a little strange. Oh, thank you. No, it's not working. Uh, hello. Can we have the microphone? Thank you. It, the mics are on. We hear you in Zoom. Okay. No, no, I, I, I was uh, saying that the rhythm was a little strange, very cut it, but uh, maybe then we can share the version on Moodle to see it in the real uh, rhythm of, of it. Thank you. Yes, I apologize for the video latency and the audio. Uh, we had the technical difficulties here, so we'll be uploading the, the video in the Moodle. So thank you. Um, we're going to now move to the feedback session of the first uh, three. Uh, we've done the three groups. And um, if you if you have, um, I'm just going to see here. If you have, um, if you're online, we should be able to just see everybody. Um, could we start with group one? because I know Runza is in China and it's very, very late for you. And I appreciate that, um, that you're staying up and I hope that your brain is still able to sort of take something in at this time of day or night. Um, maybe we could just turn it over to you to start with Runza, just if you would like to um, give us a brief kind of insight into the project before we give feedback, is that possible? Yes. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and actually for our uh, group, why we choose this topic uh, to discuss about uh, the meaning of public uh, is that uh, actually doing our artistic research, we talk a lot about what is public art, yeah, and also our title of this project, the Public Art Garage. So, but we seldom, we, we seldom think about what's the real meaning of public, yeah? When we talk about public, what do we really mean? And most importantly, how to think of the meaning of public, not from the field of arts, but to listen to the people, to the so-called public, yeah? I mean, maybe different people have different understanding on the meaning of public, but have we ever think about to ask the, the so-called public to talk about their understanding of public? So we try to use these kind of small games like to ask, to use the QR codes to combine with some question, questions. Different locations like in Mexico, in UK, in Canada, Montreal. People, what do you think uh, is public? Yeah, what means public? And then we collect these materials and turn them into so-called poem uh, with four sections, and then we combine them together with some videos that reflected our formal work in the first part and then yeah that's how it works and yeah thank you thank you i thank you runza i actually this this is group number two but i just because of runza being in china and it's so late we just thought we would just start with this feedback and then we'll work backwards um did anybody from the group want to add anything no um i'd like to turn it over to patrick Sure. Thank you, Sidvi. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, I am so touched by uh, poetic, um, deep um, thinking about the notion of public spaces and all of your personal engagement in, in, in all three pieces uh, we've seen so far. Um, it's, it's really um, pretty amazing actually to, <laughs> to experience this. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the, the, the first, uh, so the piece we've just uh, alluded to, um, what struck me most was the, um, I guess the poetic approach, but also 
the visual poems that you were offering. Um, you know, the, 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 the poem of the city, right? That was one of them, Rush, rushing like traffic, like movement. Um, so, so there's something very much alive in, in, in all of these pieces, something absolutely engaging and uh, especially not poetic, quote unquote. So I, I'm, I'm very, uh, very drawn to this, uh, uh, to, to, to this approach. And maybe a final note, uh, very briefly, um, the fact that you tied into the initial, uh, the initial piece, um, um, the, the, the street are the, the street are streets are not ours. Sorry, um, I think was extremely well um, thought out, and you've created that link. So thank you, thank you for uh, following up on this. Um, Sylvie, sorry, there's a construction happening nearby. Uh, Sylvie, I'll, I'll turn this back to you to maybe animate the um, uh, further responses. Yeah. Uh, hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I've, I'm very curious about the way that you're overlaying um, images. One of the questions that I've asked, that I will be kind of, uh, that I'm interested in in a lot of the presentation, the three presentations we've seen so far, one is the how content is generated. And once content is generated, how is it then structured and put together for this medium to be shared? Because that's also a challenge of taking the 3D performance and the personal experience and how do we then organize it to be shared in this kind of 2d flat medium and that has a linearity to it and i see that there is a lot of challenges that people are tackling with regards to how to deal with space-time configurations in this kind of medium whether it's like overlaying or sequential or a, a successive um, presentation of experience. So I, I have a question about the approach that you have chosen in terms of the overlays and how we talked about this before about the different layers. Um, and I think, and I know that there was also some talk about the somatic practice how is the body involved what is the physical experience um i don't know if one of you wants to sort of feedback on this maybe katarzyna or ala if you'd like to just address that very quickly uh, yes uh, we would uh, yeah as as you probably saw on our videos uh, it was this individual take on this uh, public theme but we also were very connected actually and uh, to me, uh, also the somatic thing was, um, I got inspired actually by, by Sylvie um, having a little experiment with me when I was at the piano and we were discussing, okay, how can I relate to that? And how can I relate to space as an artist? And that's why, um, I don't know if you remember, but I was also like touching the buildings and it was very important for me to have this idea, not just playing, but also having like a movement. So I was practicing like a squared movement to imitate the structure, but also having very deep emotional connection in the same time and also artistic and of course moving fingers as a pianist couldn't escape that one. Um, so it was really like a whole process. I was actually, for my part, I was using a green screen and because it was so important for me also to be part of a public, uh, playing the piano, being at Le Jésus in the same time. So I was trying to, to actually accommodate all these little things and create this collage of emotion, language, uh, all the barriers which somehow I tried to destroyed in the same time. So we were talking about coming from Dadaism a little bit and through collage, destroying what was before and creating something new. And I think what uh, Alea, of course, I will let her talk about her idea, but I love the idea of, of having like a real collage and, and these things going simultaneously and a map and the language and uh, everything together. And in Chrissy part with uh, Greece and Belfast together, photos with a poem uh, and again a connection between different like for example my poem was in Polish but it was also talking about the woman who has memories putting back in her suitcase so 
again, it just, it's, she's smiling for a photo in the same time it's somewhat tragic and she's disappearing into the street when I was actually going away from a, from a first uh, presentation. So I think we, we have, I think I can point out like a thousand meanings hidden in these videos which actually make sense from the beginning to the end. Um, it will require, of course, uh, I, I guess many views and I would like you to have your own interpretation on that. So I don't wanna like just explain every single detail, but it was really uh, well thought through. And uh, first China, like with this beautiful Chinese letters and a poem and uh, the idea also what public uh, actually have to say about public and uh, for an artist like myself it's also important like to see the opinion of because we tend to just perform and not really connect in this level so anyways it, it, it's just so many so many layers i will pass to ale but i think uh, we were trying to touch on as many as possible so to really get a get closer to the answer uh, of what public means to everyone actually to, to each individual separately, but also as a whole and to Thank all of you. us. Um, I see that Martin also has his hand up. So just after Ala's um, brief um, contribution, we will hear from Martin. Okay, so um, very shortly, what we want to wanted to to have in the layers of the video was the symbolic expression of what we want to say, of what we want to transmit. And also it was really, uh, I mean, it was really important for us, really relevant to not get distracted in, in saying more that we had in mind, but also like trying to, to get as much of what people said, but also what we, not only as artists, think of the act of, of the public realm, but, but also what we as citizens conceive and, and, and know and experience of the city. So that's why also we decided to choose those poems and relay them on these layers of, of meaning, more, more a symbolic meaning. And I think that was only the way to also separate our maybe radical radical thoughts from certain aspects. And yeah, that that is just what I wanted to add. And just to no, okay, yeah, yeah, Martin, I, I, I'm I'm aware that we have a time yeah. frame, so we'll have Martin and then uh, Chrissy and then Eva. Can, can you all hear me? Can you hear me well? No, I think Hello? you have to move closer to your microphone. Can, can you hear me now? Sort of. Do you hear me? Um, okay, I'm trying to... Okay, so I'm just using my... Can, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, thank you very much uh, for this presentation. That was uh, really, really impressive. And I also think uh, like kind of what moved me the most was also the, the hybrid nature again of it. And as you first, like in your first presentation, um, for me, like kind of worked in this direction of claiming uh, public space or who owns public space and owning the space with your voice. I think like this um, made for me like really let me, made me immerse into this idea of like claiming also the, the public space that is out in the digital and kind of bringing the, the, the tangible and the senses kind of in and, and trying to reclaim that. And I really like when it all came together was this moment when um, the, when you were playing the piano and this uh, like the, 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 the image was kind of climbing up the stairs where you had before unfolded that um, that um, cloth that that, that um, piano fabric and then so that um, yeah for me was really about again um, bringing like different senses and especially the element of sound to reclaim or claim public space um, and this time even in a more hybrid way than before so yeah that, that was well, my impression of it thank you 
Thank you. Um, Chrissy and then Eva, and I know there's a question that Alex posed about the participants themselves identifying what their definition of public space. I, I would suggest that that could be continued in uh, the focus group. Thank you. Chrissy? Uh, in fact, actually, what I'm going to share, uh, I think it touches a little bit uh, the question posed by Alex, uh, in the sense that um, in our initial discussions, uh, when we were actually trying to conceptualize public and to find the direction in uh, what we would like to create, what uh, would be the aspects that our project would highlight, we were thinking of the public as um, an as an entity that can comprise many different individualities, all of them distinct, all of them coexisting, we might understand each other, regardless of the differences, but at the same time, certain aspects might, might be considered and that should be respected. So in terms of the artistic form and in terms of the of conceptualizing this artistic for, form, there was also the notion of collage, and you can see that in the video that actually it, it is the combination of different videos. Each one of us had to make a video and uh, we arranged them so that they form something new. And um, they were, they, actually they are videos that uh, depict uh, each one's trajectory in terms of knowledge, in terms of experience, in terms of individual understanding of public and the individual existence actually within public spaces. In uh, the case of my video, it also depicted my movement and actually my race, well, not re quite residents, but currently I'm in Greece. And uh, part of the video was uh, done in Greece, in my hometown. So it also had the notion of uh, public space, of sharing in public, of sharing emotions, sharing experiences, make them public or let them be there for people to perceive or maybe not. So yeah, that's all for me. Thank you, Chrissy. And last, um, we'll hear from Eva before we move to the feedback on the other groups. Okay, so um, first of all, thank you to all three groups for really striking and impressive presentations. And then my um, feedback for group one, um, I thought this was a really strong example of both socially engaged and deeply uh, conceptual art. I thought it was incredibly um, complex in terms of the structure. Um, to me, it was nearly like a piece of critical theory in the way it, I was intellectually engaged with it. Um, um, and at the same time, um, it engaged all the senses so powerfully um, with uh, the piano music and the visual material and the, the complexity of the collage and the, the wonderful poetry elements and, and then those provocative questions kind of sort of um, took you out of that central experience immediately into the intellectual questioning of it and the meaning of public space and and yeah, and and so relevant as well in the ways that public space is being reduced, um, I think, um, in many places um, and access to it as, as being limited. And yeah, so um, well done. I thought it was incredibly powerful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Eva. Um, so could we work backwards to the very first group that presented? And that was Victoria and we had Victoria, Carolina, Elsa, and Jose. Um, just in re regards to time, if you are going to sort of speak about um, your, the work, please, let's just stay concise so we have time for everyone. Not everybody's been really good on that front. So um, is there something, somebody from group one who, want, who would like to um, say something about the project um, concisely? That we that is maybe a revelatory. Other than what we understood. Um, no, nothing. Else. I would love to hear what you your thoughts about it, because uh, we were thinking of giving probably a response after each of the letters, but uh, I think that's a work in progress that will happen at, after we send these letters. That's the only hint I can say. We're gonna, uh, the plan is to send the letters afterwards, like physically. 
so everybody can get it and probably keep on the conversation upon that. I don't know, Victoria, do you have anything to add? <laughs> Nothing else. Okay. Thank you. So I understand what you're saying, Jose, is that this is still a work in progress that has a, that has a possibility of it being shared? Can, okay, thank you. Um, did anybody else from the group want to share any uh, feedback on this? People who are sitting in the room, people who are out there? Patrick? Yeah, I'd just like to say thank you so much. Um, this group uh, brought us on, on uh, an incredible travel. Uh, it was both extremely intimate through the uh, addressed letters, uh, but also inclusive. Uh, I don't know about the others, but I, I very much felt like I traveled with all of you uh, to, to Weimar, to that first Berlin trip, which you know was a similar ex experience to my own as well, Victoria, uh, to, uh, to, to Paris, through Brooklyn, um, I really appreciate the fact that you've uh, opened up so many doors. You have, this is a series of entreaties. Uh, you're opening up a, a response for each other and for us as well. Uh, so Jose, you're framing this as a uh, work in progress. I absolutely get, and I strongly encourage all of you to continue this work. You have both, uh, not both, but trice, uh, uh, the narrative aspects or the, the written aspect. You have the materiality, you know, the, the, the inserted document in the library, which I will go uh, verify when I'm next uh, downtown. Uh, you had the eating as well. Like at first I thought, okay, they're performing eating, but then, you know, I, I realized, okay, but Elsa is also performing not eating, smoking. Uh, so, so, so there were like the, these <laughs> sort of symbolic totemic food or non-food items, uh, food substitute items for each of the cities as well. Uh, except Jose, of course, who was responsible and not eating in the library. Thank you. <laughs> Please, Patrick, do not take away the, the message that is meant for me one day when I enter uh, Montreal. Uh, <laughs> but you can open the book, but do not steal it. Oh, oh no, I would never dream of it. Uh, but, but yes, uh, of course, yeah. Okay. Okay, wait a minute. Actually, what are we what are we not supposed to steal here? <laughs> the notes that hope they left. Yes. Okay. Um, Elsa, did you want to say something? Uh, I was just think. I hope you can hear me through the noises of nature here. Um, the, the um, there is also another element of this presentation because we have the letters and so the the text that we read out loud. But within all of these letters are um, up Ob objects or, or notes that are, you know, extras, such as uh, the, the image that Jose put in the book, the maps that I mentioned, um, and things like this. We, we took a picture um, that we will share on the Moodle, um, but that's also, you know, part of the physicality of it and the uh, multiple possible responses to it. So Alex, you have a question um, that you love the rotational letter. Were there common elements in each? Was this plan? Did you discuss the themes or questions ahead of time? Um, and of course, encouraging the writing. So can we just have somebody from your group answer the questions? What was your prep regarding the content and um, the themes? I guess I could take that on. You could hear me OK now with this one? OK. Um, there's an equal amount of preparation and spontaneity in coming together, both in our conversations and in the outcomes that we showed today that are, as Jose well put, a, a work in progress. So um, the dialogues between us, uh, I think, are were and are the cornerstone of our coming together to be working together. And we cycled through several different possibilities and ideas. What I found so enriching and exciting about working with this group is that every, every new idea that came up, we all said yes, <laughs> and then jumped to something else. So there was this interesting process of what are we bringing from our previous collaborations, um, both the materiality of it and the experience of it, and where are we landing now with the time that we actually have to create something together or to begin something together that feels really resonant for each of us. And what was interesting in that process is 
it wasn't determined in advance, but we ended up nonetheless landing on the notion of home, which was, I mean, I'm stating the obvious, you heard that, you saw that, but wasn't something we decided in advance. We didn't set out with this idea that we each wanna be deeply thinking about this notion when we come together to talk, it kind of happened, um, accidentally is not quite the right word, it kind of happened in the happenstance way through writing to each other and the decision that we were going to write to each other, that's when the notion of home emerged. And what I, I, I think the last thing I would add to that and anyone else wants to jump in about it from our group is that that's where our notion of thinking about place landed via thinking about connection to home and what that means um, from a sense of belonging and what it means to create a new sense of home in a place that's not familiar. I would just like to add something about, um, because I have a question about the situating it in the home and if we're working with art in the public space. So I, I, am just, I would just be curious in the continuation of this project, how you would make the connection between the sense of home and the sense of the public space. I think, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll take that on just super, super briefly. And that's a, a very, uh, merci pour la précision, because it's, it's, it's kind of in the background, I think for us, but not so much in the background. Um, the notion of how public space when we arrive in a city creates a sense of place how space in the more general way becomes place more particular because we become familiar with place so the notion of home is gradually installed not just in the apartment where i live but in this larger area that i've come to become more familiar with through the different elements of the everyday that i end up repeating over a period of time and where it feels familiar, where it still feels strange, so that that's where there's a connection between the notion of home and the notion of public space or place. Thank you for that precision. Um, I think it's important to uh, just uh, not second guess how we are making these deep connections between the, the theme that brings us all together, which is art in the public space. I think Anna has a question or a comment. Maybe you'd like to just come over and grab this for me. I'll just be very brief so we can move on to the other uh, comments and, and presentations, but uh, just thinking about uh, the idea of home uh, in Zoom, suddenly people's homes become, uh, we have access to them, um, uh, so it felt very appropriate also to, we're kind, of used, we're kind of used to now looking into glimpses of people's private homes as public. Thank you for that note on extimacy. We all know intimacy, and yeah. we understand the term extimacy, which is the sharing of one's intimacy in a, in a public way. Um, thank you. I, are we ready to, and Runes are referring sense of place, I'm curious about your understanding of the difference between place and space. And I think that's a kind of a great uh, discussion question that we, we will be able to pursue further. Um, could we move to the feedback on the group, the last group that presented? And thank you, um, everyone, for, for the work. Elsa is done. showing the Elsa is showing the maps there. Oh, yeah. 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 These are the maps, Patrick. Um, I just yeah, I was I would have uh, said what Anna said, but I think uh, it became sort of obvious since we were all connecting through Zoom that talking from talking to public space, we really diverted into uh, what we're talking from each other's homes and. Uh, this is where we're talking to you from, like some of us. Um, and so this, there's just a, like, I mean, and from other people's homes as well. I mean, this is not my home, actually, Martin. Uh, it's a random person's home in Avignon. And here it is, part of the class, all of a sudden. Thank you, Thank you for just uh, pointing out, and this is a, what the initial question was, is how, do, how does the medium in which we are now sharing all of this content help us to, um, redefine or maybe expand the definition of public. And uh, this is a very much what uh, one of the beautiful challenges of these hybrid courses are uh, bringing forward. Um, could the third group uh, identify themselves and just have a brief presentation? Well, hi. Um, 
this um, this video version of of the dream collector uh, i think that has allowed us to understand the the dream collector experience as a possibility to 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 has like a structure like a game to to put in in different places in different public spaces in different cities and create a different in, in engagement with the people of this uh, specific space so we um, play with this structure in in these four cities and and find different reactions from from the people um and, and was uh, taught to to put in these uh, specific spaces in different ways because our cities has uh, different uh, characteristics for instance um, when we was planning how to uh, do it in, in our cities at least in in, in the case of of Milen and I that uh, we were in Sao Paulo and Lima, we were thinking that maybe it could be uh, dangerous to do it in, in the downtown of, of our cities because walking with a camera or, or a cell phone, uh, recording something could be dangerous because someone could take it away, uh, steal it. So, we, we uh, Milena d uh, did it in in, in a near the university uh, a university I, I did it in a public space but a, a safe safe space not not in downtown of of Lima so this kind of uh, characteristics um, are are very very important to to think uh, before did this this experience. Um, also, I, I, I realized that this uh, could be like uh, an arti artistic practice in which uh, someone or, the, or, or a group of, of people create uh, a, a game, a structure to share with other people. So now this um, action of, of the Dream Collector was uh, something to is is something to to share with with other people in in different uh, cities. You, uh, other people could do it in their cities with different uh, languages, but also changing the images, changing some reference. There is a part in the in the narrative that uh, refers to the to the city that the dream collector. Uh, dream and, um, and, and found that could could be changed uh, uh, thinking in the city where the dream collector or the performer of the dream collector uh, is uh, doing the, the performance so I, uh, we, we found this very uh, special uh, something that could have an uh, an independent life from from us. It it could be replicated uh, without our uh, supervision or permission or, or observation. So maybe we can let the dream collector structure or, or game uh, be in the in the world in the future. Thank you, Jose. Um, this brings up the question of creating new uh, shared structures with which um, that, that this, I was speaking with Martin about how sometimes we are making this work and it's not in, in these kind of clean compartments. Um, the, you know, it leaks through and then it contaminates, you know, just that it will kind of just uh, find its way into something else. So this is just something about uh, many of the structures that a lot of you are presenting are also creating new possibilities for others to experience and to take on and to personalize. So I thank you very much for, for that as being somebody who's very interested in transmission structures. Um, do we have people who would like to put Patrick or Martin, Eva, Alex, anyone out there who would like to um, just step in?
Well, sure. I, I have a um, uh, th thank you, uh, um, Milena, Vanessa, and, and Diego, uh, for sharing this with us. Uh, it was great to see uh, the various cities that you're in. Uh, again, you allowed us to travel and to to engage uh, with, with some more um, uh, relatively intimate spaces. Um, I have a question: What what uh, what will you do with all these collected dreams? Um, so, so you have a dream, uh, a dream catcher, a dream collector, uh, who basically, in each of the cities, prompts us and brings us to think about our own dreams, and yet it's called the dream collector. So, I'm wondering what is the what is the collection eventually, and how can you build that collection, and and what will the collection be built uh, for and and towards? It might be a rhetorical question. You don't have to answer, but I'm just asking the question out loud. Yeah, I'll, I'll answer to that. Um, at first, it began with uh, an idea that uh, we wanted to engage with the public in a playful way and in various cities where this type of engagement would be possible and to experience the differences, how they the public would connect to us but also bring in this idea of something that can be considered the last free space, which is our dream space. It's possibly one of the most private spaces that we have left. Um, and we wanted to bring uh, what is so private into the public squares, into the public space, and create this kind of connection in a ludic, in a very playful way that would you know, integrate you know, kids, elderly, everybody who would be just transiting around uh, the space where we would be. But also what was very resonating very strongly with us was the fact that we are ourselves uh, traveling. Uh, we are from somewhere, but going to somewhere or living somewhere else. And then in the process of doing this project, we were also traveling to other continents and moving and you know carrying luggage and and, and having these dreams, you know, of being in other places. So this, in a way, was also a very, uh, it was uh, a commonality that we had, that we shared amongst the three of us. And that very quickly became uh, a theme that we could uh, develop and, uh, and present. And, uh, you know, with this idea was also um, the idea of simultaneity. Uh, sometimes there is this, uh, like I'm very familiar with the dream space, um, how this is dealt with with indigenous communities where the dream has an immense importance to them, where they sit together uh, in the beginning of their day and they share their dreams uh, amongst their, their families and their, their village to see if there are congruences there. Uh, where they can draw uh, their next steps, you know, their actions throughout the day from what their dreams told them. So I was, you know, having these thoughts that, uh, that we do uh, uh, this performance. And then who knows that in the, in the simultaneity of performing this in different uh, places and spaces that we would get some congruencies also or not. You know, this is very open-ended. And I think the, the idea of uh, collecting dreams can come precisely from uh, the repetition of this or the potential for repetition of this performance uh, that can be not just done by us. I mean, we have a tradition of artists who, uh, who work uh, uh, with performances that they make, uh, that the most important thing is not the performance itself, but the instructions of how to perform. And in essence, you know, our idea with the video was to um, publish something that can also, uh, I don't know, inspire or can also serve as this kind of structure to go out into the public space and create performances that can have various iterations uh, where the performer as well as the public uh, can experience, you know, how is this dream space? <laughs> Uh, uh, happening uh, in the public or with the public uh, in various uh, places in the world. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, one of the items in the performance, I do have questions um, with the way that, and, and I'd love to see the version that wasn't, um, that, that, that was meant to be. Um, I, d I do have questions about the way that um, the content was overlaid and how you structured it, 
because that is the challenge. You just talked about simultaneity and congruence, and I think these are two key words that I would just put to you, you don't need to answer this, about how you are actually putting the material together to connect with these two ideas. I, I, I did have some reticence at some times as to what is, um, why bring something for, from the past forward and you know what what importance is everything of the same importance um how do things bounce off each other um so i do have questions about the the structure itself but i i think it's a beautiful challenge to try and find the, the notion of simultaneity and congruency in a structure um especially in this kind of uh, sharing one thing I wanted to just, I love the idea that you're saying about people in a village, uh, Vanessa, sharing things together. It's a very different sense of, um, the, other people have brought up the notion of Weimar being a small place where you know what the guy bought the day before when you run into him at the bar the next night. Um, that, that notion of the village um, and scale. I think this is a really important uh, question about public space scale intimacy what is revealed what we know about somebody because of um, prox proximity um, and i i also one of the items that i really enjoyed in this performance was seeing the drawings the graphics uh, i think there's something about the graphic material in this project that i would love to highlight a little more I feel that um, there's a, a, lo a lot of um, importance given to the verbal, the text, the spoken, but I think that you're also generating uh, opportunities for people to express in a nonverbal way. And I saw the children immediately finding space for that. So this kind of welcoming an uh, opening space for the nonverbal, I think is a, also another way of connect, collecting dreams. So I would just encourage you to, um, to just look into that aspect of it some more. Do we have other people who'd like to add um, to anything to this group, either in comment or I'm trying to read the... Yes, yes I, um, I'd just like to come in and say how um, I thought the great strength of this piece was um, the generosity and inclusivity and in integrating the audience. Um, and there was something really um, that, that I thought was really moving about that. And, and then at the same time that there was this, this tension between that kind of concrete, concrete liveness of it with the audience, um, with the performance taking place and that, that ephemeralness of the dream space and kind of inviting us and inviting the audience that was present in the space. Um, to explore their own dreamscape um yeah and uh, that, that was really very strong um and i have a question as well about the role of the white dress and the white uh, sorry the white tool and in the kind of um water at the end um i thought that was a very thought-provoking image but I, i'd just like it, you to invite you to comment on that if you Thank, thank you for the question. Um, so we were, we had uh, kind of an image uh, to proceed from in the very beginning. And uh, it would be uh, the dream collector uh, standing in a public space and inviting uh, people together around. And uh, we thought that this person would be, um, would have a very whimsical quality to, uh, to him or her, you know, somebody who would maybe uh, be coming from another uh, world, you know, not not from Earth, and uh, and then we toyed with, you know, with the idea, what does this person does this person wear, and uh, in the process of repeating uh, this performance, uh, we each uh, kind of developed our own persona for the dream collector. And uh, when I did my little part uh, near the water, was filmed here in the park uh, in Weimar, uh, Diego commented that uh, it was uh, like a meta dream collector. So the meta dream collector in the beginning, and then 
in fact, you know, the title of the piece is not in the plural, it's dream collector as, you know, uh, as one dream collector that kind of explodes into a myriad of different uh, personas or, um, uh, or um, yeah, um, um, how this, this persona uh, takes different forms. And uh, I had uh, just, I had gone into the park and uh, filmed a, a few scenes and uh, uh, somehow the water really called me to, to go near it and film it. But what really triggered me to put uh, this uh, bit at the very end was uh, because when Diego and uh, Milena delivered me the, their performances, when I was looking uh, through it, uh, there was the, that part with the policeman and somebody in the video says, don't worry, you know, they say in Spanish, don't worry, we'll clean it up. And I was thinking, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's chalk, you know, of course, it can be cleaned very easily from the ground in a public space, you know, we shouldn't be so concerned about this type of interaction in the public space, it's a very playful thing, but um, I thought of this cleansing uh, bit, you know, and automatically I, I reached into uh, this part that I had filmed and I thought, you know, this is really perfect. It's like, what, what, why do you have to cleanse, you know? So it's this meta dream collector kind of like cleansing the, the dreams, but uh, having that connection to, to this idea of, uh, uh, of the memory of uh, dreams. Thank you for bringing. And I put a link here. Uh, up here if you would like to access the video again on Vimeo I have posted it there so that you can watch it again later without the thank the you so much oh, that was very illuminating thank you so much um and, and it just brings back a dreamscape from my childhood when no, um, friends and I tried to um oh. get into the Guinness book of records by having the longest part of a street coverage in a chalk work of art <laughs> did you make it Eva no <laughs> We still have time. Um, can we, we have time for just one last um, intervention or question before we start with, um, a, we have a small break and then we'll go into the group two. And Anna, you have a sh thing. It's super, super brief. I just, I didn't realize until it was almost over that uh, it was not intentional, the kind of disjointedness between the sound and the visual, but I quite enjoyed it, um, especially because we were looking at dreams and it was very interesting to, to watch people speak and to hear something else or hear, hear it later. So I'll be curious to watch the two versions and compare them, but it, it was kind of interesting. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. And we did mention something that dreams are not sequential. They don't have think words like because and after and therefore, and they seem to all bombard um, us at the same time. So yes, it, that kind of some beautiful accident. Um, so are we going to have a, who's the timekeeper right now? Who, who's who's the, the somebody has is a timekeeper? Is it Alex or Eva? Can we just look at the schedule where we're at? Okay, I think we can have a 15 minute break. Is that good enough or do we need 20? 15 is good. Okay, so we're all going to just join back at um, 1130 here. So 17 minutes.
Sacamos cosas así, o sea, yo soy material crudo, disponible y experto en que todas esas cosas pasen. 
Sí, 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 claro, claro. Is it just you two, uh, Andre? Uh, yeah, okay. So I'm just writing a note for everybody that we're starting with this right away after the. Yeah, you're first because um, instead of doing four and then three, it took a while to get going. So we're just doing three. Yours is really easy to access. And then we walk. And then we do the other one. Okay?
Everything's going. Okay, are we ready to start back? <laughs> okay, I think that we will need to start again. Um, is everybody back? Uh, could I please just ask everybody to, to um, just get together with your computer or screen for a moment so we can Can you hear us? Hello, everybody. So, hello. All oh, right, so we're back on track. Uh, we there was a sm small change of plan. We did three groups with feedback because of Runza being in China, and then now we're going to start immediately with the audio walk. Uh, so please get ready to do it on your end, and uh, then we're going to have um, the uh, three, four, and seven after that, and then we'll have the feedback. So if you could just, if you do have uh, earphones, earplugs, um, and Anna and, uh, and or Andre will um, just take it from here. Thanks, Sylvie. Uh, is this on? 
Yeah, you can hear me. Um, so just uh, to be sure, there was a bit of a hiccup last night. So the, there are two files floating around, but the correct one uh, says final, and it's on the email that says uh, corrected in it. And it's the one that's uh, 6 minutes 59. So that's the correct file. Um, so you're welcome to have a walk uh, wherever you like. We encourage you to get away from where you are. Um, it will last under seven minutes, and there will be a prompt to turn around. So you don't need to worry about uh, checking the time uh, to be back uh, while you're walking. Yeah, so so uh, start whenever you like, and uh, we encourage those online uh, to also um, step away from your screen and start wherever you like, and we'll see you in about seven minutes. <laughs>
Hello, everybody. I think I need some microphone. Um, yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, is everyone back uh, in wherever you may be in the rest of the world? Um, so thank you. Um, Anna and uh, André, or Andrea, I don't know which one you want to use. Um, and also there were the voices of Nadja and Ha. So just, uh, you might have, if, just in case you might have been asking it the way I was asking. Um, we're going to move, so if you have a chance to take, uh, uh, hi, I'm here. Um, if, so if, you, are we ready for the next group? So hopefully you've had moments to just take some notes. Um, the next group is with uh, Barry and Mark and Margarita.
And uh, could you please do a little, and then we're still waiting for Alex to show up. Um, yeah, Alex went for a walk. Um, okay, and we have, who else is, Patrick, just in case, I, I just want to mention that when, if you're outside, sometimes we get some wind on your, on your uh, voice. I can't hear you very well, Sudi, what? I said, I said sometimes if you're speaking outside, we might get a lot of wind in your voice. Yeah. So you know, okay. Sure. All right, so thank you. Um, I guess they will just join us. Or are we going to just wait till they mosey on back? Hey? Yeah, oh, I see. We had the Weimar group went outside. Okay, I see that there are people coming back, being reflected. Where is, oh, that's me. Look at this. I'm even doing a kind of my own version of, of, the, of the projects you're presenting. I could do hands. Yeah, I know. I just, I'm everywhere. Um, I think I'll go and hide. So um, let's just wait another minute for the Weimar group to join back again. I'm going to see if, uh, if they could kind of just read their, um, read their texts. Hello, people from Weimar. We are back, and we see that you have enjoyed a little mosey. I don't know how to say mosey in German, but you moseyed in Weimar. Sie haben eine Mose in Weimar. <laughs> Vielleicht. <laughs> um, was that just a kind of a ghost of the Weimar people? Okay, Martin? No, okay, hold on a minute. Hello, Margarita, can you hear us in Weimar? Oh, the plants, there she's speaking to her plants. She's serving tea to her plants. Does anybody have um, direct access to anybody in Weimar, like via message? <laughs> hey? Yeah, I didn't hear turn around, personally. I just turned around. Well, maybe everybody just can take time to just write some notes for feedback and then
Hello, Margarita, um, can you hear us? Hello, we're yeah, just hi. coming back into the space, Montreal. Okay. Can you hear us? Yes, we're waiting for you. Um, we really need to mo keep moving right now. Okay. Thank you. So um, we're going to move with Barry, Mark, and Margarita's project. Could we start now? Thank you. Hi. I can't really unmute. We're having a little bit of a... Oh, good. You can hear me now. Um, should I play the... Yeah. I think it would be easiest if we played the video from there. Oh, good. I live in the city, on a street with row houses built before World War I, old houses in an old neighborhood. My street is called Old Orchard. The name is all that remains of what was once the most fertile farmland on the island of Montreal. This is my favorite street in Weimar, probably because it looks like just a beautiful street in the old part of town that you can get from the Schiller Museum or the Markplatz. It's really not that picturesque of a street in Weimar. There are much prettier ones, like the alley where I live. But I love this street in Weimar because of its curves, because of its sunlight. Marc, dis-moi, c'est quoi ta chose préférée à propos de Montréal? I love how it always feels like in the winter and in the summer, the nature is taking over. Like the, the plants grow way too fast for us to keep up with them and the ruelles are just full of greenery and in the winter it's like we can't shovel the snow fast enough. I want to talk about what we gain and what we lose as the city grows and changes. But really, I want to talk about borders. Old Orchard was itself a border separating one farm from another. There are borders and there are paths. Paths are borders within borders, separating one side from another, giving us permission to move through what could be an inhospitable area, a difficult terrain. This is my favorite street in Weimar because it's the street where you're most likely to see your friends looking at the flowers, sitting outside, having lunch at the stores that they work in or own, and there are such beautiful little handcrafted things here and everybody somehow just pulls together all the time. They're the most beautiful flowers. They're beautiful stones. It feels to me like it's the city most that I've ever been to that's kind of second to the nature within it. Comme la chaleur l'été. Mm -hmm. Yes, very, very much so. <laughs> here. This border within a border says is safety, but it also says, don't stray. My area of town is called NDG. It stands for Notre Dame de Grasse. In the bad old days, maybe 40 or 50 years ago, some called NDG no damn good. I don't know, there's just a sense of both the small town feel and the beauty of the city. 
and the diversity of the city, even if it seems like a tourist street, and it is, with little tourist shops. I also love the design that's put into everything in the care, and the fact that somehow all the charming little things end up everywhere. C'est quoi ton meilleur souvenir de Montréal qui se serait passé durant la nuit? Uh, I think it was maybe six years ago that I went climbing up the mountain at nighttime with a friend who'd never been here before. And um, we went and saw the beautiful view and then right away it was like the fireworks started. I can take a metro and be downtown in 15 minutes. There's a stop near our house or I can walk about the same distance as the metro stop and enter the Falaise Saint-Jacques. Prochaine station, Vendôme. I listen closely. Birds. Rain, perhaps. The wind in the leaves. There is no traffic. It is hard to believe that this falaise, this ravine, is almost in the center of the city. It's 50-50 sometimes. I definitely feel like I have a place here, but I feel like there's an entirely different world that's kind of unbreakable or unbroachable, uh, unapproachable, I guess is the word. This is my favorite street in Weimar, because even with the tourists walking up and down it and staring at everything with their sunglasses on, I always feel at home. Not many people come here, but some do. There are lots of surprises in the place. We are at a periphery where imagined rural meets real urban. You can walk here and pretend the city doesn't exist, but it does. When you have these kind of like entry points into it through certain people, but other times you'll never actually discover it. This is what borders tell me. You can't take what they encompass, what they separate for granted. I just sort of want to talk about why it's my favorite street. I think it is. It's because it's a thoroughfare. It's a thoroughfare of work and play and sort of explains why this city is so close that you can do everything you need to do on this street and see everyone on this street. Est-ce que tu as l'impression qu'il te reste quelque chose à découvrir à propos de Montréal? Yeah, I feel like every day there's something to see, something new but also something that's getting covered up and never seen again. And I love, uh, I really love how that happens here. We like to think that we can cross borders easily until we come to a place where we can no longer cross. Thank you, Barry, Margarita, and Mark, for this foray into into your um, into the heart of your city. Um, thank you for for this deambulation. Also, following our audio talk, uh, I think the programming is working out really well, and I think that we can move to uh, the group of Margarita, Karina, and then Taika presentations of research content as performance, pre presenting a website as they are setting up. If you want to just take a couple of minutes to make your notes about what you've just uh, experienced. Okay, so let's just be uh, doing a switcheroo. Is somebody else going first? Is the, is the last group going second last? And you're going now? We seem to have a confusion in the schedule. Sorry? Yes, I thought that that was what we we're going to see, is your work, the website. Sorry, can we just sort of figure this technicality out? 
Okay, so we're going to have Idun and Natalia. We're going to have Idun and Natalia go because of uh, some screen setup, and then we will have the other group. So thank you. So we're going to have to move the camera to follow Idun and Natalia into their um, into their space. Is that correct? I mean, everybody can come over and kind of do your own thing and experience it. So, uh, but there is. Uh, did you post a link, or did Sylvie post it? Yeah. So can we? So have in the Zoom chat, there is a link to our website. Uh, it's same website as before. So you, what you can do is uh, go into the website to read about it. Uh, and you can also just walk around because this is an experience where you have different levels of representation and different levels of screens. Um, and there, uh, the people on Zoom, you're, I guess you can see the model. As we have, do we have one camera on the model? So what we, the setup is basically it's the web page. Um, we have a model. And then we have screens showing the process. So there's um, artificial sun. There is the sun in the video. Uh, there might be some steam at some point. Maybe not. It's, uh, it depends on the weather in here. We'll see what happens. Uh, and then the starting point of uh, the walks uh, since the game last time was kind of centered around um, uh, plus this arts. So that's where we started. And in our process, we basically walked from this very empty space. This was completely empty when we filmed it with a 360 camera, um, moved to the top of um, uh, Mount Royal. Um, and then we wanted to make portals because we talked about how we're portaling uh, between the three different universities involved in this project. Uh, and because the last time we worked with um, a teammate in, in uh, Germany, um, but now we were just in Montreal, but I also wanted to include uh, Ireland somehow. Uh, so we got some inspiration from the Druid culture uh, and um, the stone structures that are connected to calendars, time perception, um, and kind of the solstices of the year. But because we're not Irish, we're, we have uh, Swedish and Polish des uh, descendants uh, and ancestors mostly. Um, we, we looked at similar structures because the Celtic culture uh, fed into the Norse culture as well. And the Norse culture was also represented in Poland a lot. So what we found there was like a common ground was the stone settings. Uh, and then especially in Sweden and Poland, you find a lot of um, uh, ship symbols. So ships uh, depicted on um, stone from the Stone Age and on and still live on in, in the life philosophy or religion, if you want to use that word, that, that I'm kind of part of. Um, and this ship um, model that we built uh, is um, very inspired by a place called Ale in the south of Sweden, uh, where there's ancient burial grounds from um, Stone Age, Bronze, Bronze Age. And then later during the Iron Age, this was built on top. So there's a story of, of burial in this place. Uh, and I heard that it's the sa same with Montreal. Uh, so there is this history of, of um, importance for, for um, local, like na the First Nations here. Um, and then when I looked, uh, when we looked on Wikipedia uh, to learn more about this, uh, there was basically, I'm, I'm just looking at my piercing because it felt though. <laughs> um, um, so, so there was nothing, there was like all about the French history of discovering the mountain. I'm laughing because it's so sick in my head. Um, but And then there, there was like three sentences about the, the history. And then we walk up to the cross and there is this cross, uh, but uh, that's, I've, we don't share the same uh, like anger towards the cross, so I'm not, not gonna talk about it so much. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically I want you to share um, the stuff with us. Also one note before I hand over to you, if you want to add something, is that there's also ship burials underground, uh, both in Poland and Sweden, where persons, like for example, um, there, there's one grave in Poland that's very interesting. So it's a female uh, warrior and she's buried with a board game. So we're kind of continuing with this uh, um, 
game feel, but now we were, we're basically using the city as a board game, but also we built this fit, fiscal model uh, where we also got support from your partner who is a Warhammer player and model builder. So we got some uh, support with how do we do this grass and, and this stuff. So it's a very fun process. Also carrying this around <laughs> on the walk. Uh, so uh, everything okay? Okay, so uh, a bit uh, more about the model. So this was a very long thing. It was kind of like a game of Chinese whispers. Uh, this part of the project, you can see some of the stuff we filmed on the mountain uh, because the model is actually created on the uh, idea that uh, like for example stonehenge or the presumptions about stonehenge and other megalithic structures that there were calendars to see to observe cycles of the sky so this one actually is we looked at a, a lot of like archaeological <clears throat> finds and from that extrapolated how <clears throat> the ship buildings were made so the with the ship uh, burials and like grounds it's uh, three times the length and uh, uh, for one of the width and we try also transferred it so the portals uh, if you look from the center of the ship from the model on the solstice so there's like a certain amount of uh, time you will be able to observe the uh, look, if, if you stood in the center of the ship, you would be able to actually, uh, the sun would come out if you're in Montreal from one side and go back to the other. So we did some uh, research on how to do mathematical models uh, within this to count the time and be able to observe the during summer solstice. Uh, the uh, sunrise and sunset in Montreal, so you can have like a mini calendar. Uh, we made like, uh, but it's uh, a bit more uh, visualized on the um, website. Uh, how to plan it? If everybody wants to make your own, we can share like the sketches for it. It's actually pretty fun to make your own like little calendar thing. Of course, it only works if you align it perfectly to the north because uh, this is how uh, the alignment for it was north uh, south and uh, with the uh, biggest man here or like the biggest stone facing towards the north and uh, yeah and we wanted to like when we were thinking about how to present it here uh, we kind of thought first to film it but like when we were up there in the mountain uh, we really liked the light and we try, tried to recreate it with like the projector which is I don't know, the closest very similitude we could go to sun rays and like uh, what, what we experienced when we walked around with the maquette on the mountain of Montreal. It was also during midsummer. Yeah, it was during midsummer. Also, very important, the sunrise and sunset is kind of uh, the, because you have to have the uh, percentages, not percentages, what do you call it, the 360? Uh, around the sun, it's actually valid for more than one day. It's actually valid for a week. <laughs> yeah, research. <laughs> yeah, but I guess that's why midsummer in Sweden at least moves depending on, or it's just the first week, yeah. weekend or something. And it's what the Montrealers call something else with a saint's name, uh, which is also appropriation of the actual midsummer and summer solstice. And there's also the Peruvian holiday on the same, the 24th. Uh, what's the name? Inti yeah, exactly. so, so I read about this because it was the same date as the Swedish Midsummer, um, but they were both covered up with a name of a saint. So it's kind of this how you how you cover up and change the names of stuff. The difference is that in the north it is the mid the midsummers, and in the in the south is the welcoming of the winter. So it's the opposite. And that's why we also have two portals. So one is. Uh, for the winter, one is for the summer solstice. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, so, and uh, you did share in the talk, so you'll see in the comments a little earlier that you didn't uh, put the link to the website. Um, and I don't know if you've had a moment to go and look at it because I, you give the explanation of your project um, I just have a, a, before we go to the next group, I just have a question um, about the game that you mentioned. Uh, which one? 
that's the, linked the to this one? Oh. Uh, it's inspired by board games. Okay. Uh, so, so it's not a separate game. Uh, it's the model because it's uh, created as a board game. Also, like the D and D players do, and Warhammer's create. It, it's a type of um, board game like or role game like thing. So from going to a digital game, we looked at um, more board and live uh, play games, but also inspired by the ship burials where you could find board games. So inside burials from the Iron Age. Um, Actually, a dice, if you know small dice, uh, the same kind of dice made from bone, uh, you can find both in Persia and in uh, uh, north of Scandinavia. They look like identical. Uh, so, so, and those are common in, in uh, grave material from certain uh, ages, especially Iron Age in, in my country and in, in Viking Age. So thank you for this um, travel through the past and to time forward. Um, and, and I had one note also because yes. all the presentations we saw because I didn't comment on the morning, uh, it really felt like everything was portals. So it's like everything goes through portals, especially the letters where you read in between and the dreams and everything. Really, everything really felt like portals, I think, between um, the people in our group. Yes, I think there's a sense of serendipity that is uh, traveling through this group at this point. Um, we have one last group, and then we'll be able to do feedback. Um, did you have something you wanted to add before we move to the next group? Oh, yes, okay, so we need to reset the screen for the next group, and as we do that, please take a moment, once again, to make your notes. Yeah, that's perfect. So just let us know when you're ready to start so that we can uh, aim the cameras and share with our um, international friends. Sylvie, is, is there a third mic or can we have this one for our presentation? You can have it. Yeah, okay. Thanks. I put the um, sanitizer. Do you want us to keep masks on? Yeah, is this okay? No, the religion is on. Okay. Uh, it's right here. Okay. We got it on three. Turn that to Okay. On three, right? That's okay. Yeah, yeah. We, we've sent the link. So. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the second presentation of our project, The Colonnade. Welcome. <laughs> um, in Montreal, our group is Margaret here and myself, Karina. And online, we have Taika, who's uh, in Queens, but today she's in France. Um, so the colonnade for us, uh, we're gonna sort of take off where we left off with all of you on the first presentation. Um, as this colonnade has become sort of a catalyst, a starting idea of a journey for us, it has taken us into sort of a layered, 
network of words, concepts, places, walks, conversations together, facts, memories, real and imagined. So all this has evolved and elaborated into a website, uh, which we're going to ask you to all participate within us, with us today. And there's a series of videos uh, coming on. that's coming on that are were part of the process, which and you you know can make the connections or look at whatever parts you wish. And um, so Taika here is going to take take us on the journey into the website. And just one. And or, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I just want to finish off that um, this video here is us, we're moving towards the colonnade, which we all move towards in our first presentation. And at the same time, uh, in tandem, this is a Zoom we did with Taika at the Giants Causeway in Belfast. So Taika, take it away. Thank you. Margaret, did you want to add something still? I just wanted to say along that line, um, right now the sound that we are what we're saying right now is being emitted into the street and this visual being emitted into the street and outside here is a colonnade. So we are situating now this colonnade back into this colonnade and a big part of this project as Krina was saying is this re repetitive juxtaposition and similarities we're exploring and yeah, so Taika, everyone look to the screen. Yes. Thank you. I would like to also ask if the Zoom audience, who the people who do want to participate or are interested, would put their videos on. And you can always put your hands up if you want to take part. So I want to welcome you back to the colonnade. Look, the pillars reaching to the skies, wall on the other side, pathway forward. Symmetry enclosing you, directing you. Will you walk the hallway? Will you look up? Will you step out of it? Or will you let it embrace you while finding your way through the illusions of otherworldly places? Go wander and explore this space, this web of connections. So I would like to first uh, invite somebody in Concordia to choose the direction we are going to start at the web page. So either legends, edges, ripples, or cracks. Just call it out. Call. Legends. Start legends. with legends. My heart of giants following eroded tracks, monuments of nature, trying to catch a place in it. History shifts, generations, ancient, revealing, unimaginable formations from core of the galaxy, geometry, power, vertigo, weave into the universe, a point which story ends and life begins, conscious never ending, desperate truth, dissolving movement and memory. My heart is an alien on a journey through a forest of giants. I walk slowly following eroded tracks. With our monuments, we copy the giants of the nature, trying to catch the wonders in our legends, searching our place in it. History shifts through generations, an ancient sense of place revealing fantastical explanations of unimaginable formations. From core of Earth to the last star of the galaxy, a sacred geometry imbues secret power, a get vertigo looking through a microscope. I weave my roots into the universe and I ask myself, is there a point at which the story ends and life begins? Our collective conscious never ending, these deciphered truths shifting, dissolving, unfolding in time. Movement transports us and embodied words enfold memory. Some of these words are linked to other pages. They're the underlined words, giants, game of poetry, or we could go encountering the giant's causeway. Does anyone want to choose a direction? 
game of poetry. So this game, we started with talking about wanting to write a Dada poem together. And we came up with a, an idea of having a game with rules. And so in our web page, we have four poems, which are themes and topics are cracks, ripples, legends, and edges. And so basically it is the three of us. We have been writing it together, but so that we haven't seen what the other ones have been writing, only one or two words, as you can see here. So I was writing, I wrote this after I could only see these four words. And then you hit it and so on. So this, uh, it's about the process of doing them. And I think we will have to go back to home. We can start again. Would somebody like uh, in the Zoom to choose the next direction? Or can be the same one? Etches. Etches. Following the parameters, footsteps, weeds and crevices, through systems in ruins, exposed, weeds grow, words wait for the sun. I remember the edge wind whispering in my ears, other places. Look, spaces overlooked. What situates within? What is above? What is inside, upside, outside? Memories. I think I unbreathe the colonnade, the fringe of our society, forgotten. So as you can guess, there is a hidden poem if you go over it. But we will not read it now as we want you to have a reason to come back to this page. <laughs> and on this page, there are a few more underlined links, uh, footsteps, proportions, ecosystems. Anyone want to choose one of these from in this room or on Zoom? Ecosystems. So there is a disconnection here. <laughs> so I'm going to have to direct you. So once uh, we have a disconnection, we luckily have a map. So I can still get you there. So if you ever get lost on a web page, you can come here and find it. Can we go to ecosystems on the map, Taika? Yeah. Great. There we go. So the rich edge is where change exchange happens between habitats, communities, populations of plants, people, animals, life. There are infinite edges, edges within edges, everywhere, immeasurable possibilities for creative cross-pollination, influence, diversity. You could read more about edges on this page. And does anyone want to choose the next hyperlink? Crack? Migration. Okay, there is again some issue. Oh, okay, we're hard. but that's okay. We can get lost too. Yeah. Are, are we lost? Are we lost? We are that? lost. <laughs> we are lost. You, are we lost? Okay. My family is the result of circumstances of migration and families leaving where they started, leaving their home every generation, and me who left to be in Montreal in this class here wondering about this colonnade, borders, migration, lost languages, culture, my position in Jatjage, and the many other places we find ourselves transported from here. Shall we follow another link? Colonnade, borders, other places. Let's go other places. Ancient. <laughs> <laughs> other, pl oh. other places. Okay. Our, our walk from the colonnade took us over the sea to the north coast of Northern Ireland, where 40,000 basalt columns stand, creating a landscape which inspires people to imagine legends and stories from faraway times. Why do we keep running this way? Stepping from stone to stone, what kind of legend would you tell about this place?
Let's click that link. Are there seals nearby or selkies swimming and calling, wondering about the land? Each hexagon becomes a multidimensional plurality of earth and light in their eyes, a wonder, a proliferation of diamond lights. Do these basalt columns belong to seals, selkies, mythical creatures, to giants, to the ocean, the grasses and mosses, seaweeds, the land, to us? The giant Finn McCool hid in a cradle, wailing like a baby to frighten the Scottish giant Ben and Donor. A grandparent softly tells a story to the new generation. On a video call at the Giant's Causeway, we hear the giant's muffled roar in the wind-cracked warp of audio, our virtual presence splicing space-time, the myth coming to light. This is my legend. What legend would you write? So we have a space where you can write just with two sentences of what legend you would imagine in this space being. That is when you are at home and you can write it. So final, who wants to choose the direction? Maybe someone on Zoom? Oh, cracks, we have a crack. crack. Fissures as veins, feeding life wherever. The cracks creating new public spaces where there are none. Where there are none, sorry. Inhale and exhale, a solace, inhabitation. Deep roots crumble, you fall into shallow foundations. Fugitive clouds, companions. Colonnade, pathways, rift, time and material, severing unmitigated intentions. So here we have veins, colonnade, and cracks in materials and forms. That, cracks in materials and forms? Can the causeway never erode like the Place des Arts columns are eroding while they wait for destruction, wait for new development? Instead, we see these columns falling apart, their materials crumbling, breaking new life, forming as they sink into the earth, the hidden waters, the imagined waters of ocean, of whales, plankton, jellyfish. We flash compact disks to reflect light the refractions forming sea creatures of the sunlight in the colonnade. What creatures pull their bodies up on the giant's causeway and lay their dreaded, trenched bodies on the cold rocks, taste the salt, feel the slime of the sea. We expand our fingers upon the concrete, feel the cold of the shadow, wonder at the magnitude of lava, at the transfixed effects of shadows, the potential of erosion, our fingers feeling the cold stone, sea creatures floating, the sun covered by cloud to disguise us momentarily in shades of blue. Well, let's go to river lines. <laughs> oh, or back. that didn't work. Are we lost? So, are we, lost? we are lost. Are we? Oh. Yes. So, uh, we have a couple minutes. I think we are time. getting at the time. Yeah. So, this yeah. is why we wanted to have this presentation to present uh, the process we have been making and most authentic way this kind of the complexity of it and the layers and the connections. And here, uh, on this web page, we would want to invite everybody to go on, on their own time and explore themes and places and where it takes you. And some uh, the people from Weimar might be even surprised. They might even find not just be places from Northern Ireland and here, but there are a couple spots for you to discover as well. Should we go to a final choice on this page here? To uh, we have a bit more time. We have two. We have no more. Oh, yeah, because there's an end to one of the videos. Our videos were ten, timed at ten minutes. So okay, so we have a bit more time. 
Does anyone want to choose uh, some word on the map? What's that? Resting. Rest. <laughs> Where will it take you? One more, maybe? <laughs> Somebody in the Zoom? Put somebody in the Zoom like to give it a try. Alex asked for whales. Oh, whales. Giant sperm whales sleep, floating, suspended, gravity free, skeletons drifting, vertical clicking sounds as if to walk out of the sea into a dream of immortal life beneath the deep waters in the midst of the hill beyond Mount Royal, the St. Lawrence Gulf, beyond the cave hills, the Irish Sea. The skeletons should be linked, but they're not right now. <laughs> and giants. Oh, giants, maybe. Yeah. I think Back that's okay. Imagining legends. We're back where we, so we're still yeah. working out the circularity of it all and trying to deepen the layers of the, of the site. This is a work in progress. It, it follows from a bit more complex. These are the <laughs> mind maps we began with as inspiration for the site. Uh, using the word colonnade as a starting point, as as a concept, and also etymology. Take us to home too. Is that possible? We're almost done because the videos are moving. We'll spin out of here. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for this um, very co complex and complete um, way of getting lost and finding one's way just on the very a basic notion of colonnade. There's nothing basic about anything that we've seen today. Um, and um, and I think it's Idun who was mentioning about portals, how we're starting to find a lot of connections as well as legends and stories and dreams and things that we imagine um, and that we interconnect with the public space. Did you have something that you wanted to just wrap up on with this group before we go into feedback? just uh, reiterate uh, that a big part of it was walking and moving and and then writing together walking and writing so we did zoom walks so this footage taika took us to the giant's causeway and she was at the giant's causeway and karina was downtown at the colonnade and we were trying to find that juxtaposition between the two and and then from there we were inspired to carry on with the writings and the poetry exercise and then karina uh, we and i also and taika also ventured to the colonnade and were exploring embodiment as you see in some of this footage here yeah. there's supposed to be sound at the end of this one but okay <laughs> um yeah i think the the layers and the going deeper into each each aspect and concept is is something which when the website started to get developed we just it became this 
this Alice in Wonderland hole of exploration, and it's very fascinating to do that with in a group and see what people are adding and and adding on to it and develop. And it was it's a really cool process. It was really, yeah. And I think having someone in having Taika in Ireland kind of transported us mm -hmm. to and and helped us explore that temporality a lot and get our mind in really opened mm -hmm. out of this colonnade space, mm -hmm. as well as the built structure of it, having these gaps and openings above and at ground level. Yeah, and it's, uh, I would invite, you, invite you all back to the colonnade to think about it in a new way. <laughs> yeah, it's all about the process of exploring and learning with the and through the public space and noticing maybe the forgotten borders of the public space as well. So thank you. Thank you. Um, because we've just started talking about this, um, just to keep our memory fresh, I would just like to t get us back to the audio walk. Um, and so that we are also go going in and out of the colonnade open space and closed space. Um, so I would like to open up the feedback on um, Anna and Andre's uh, audio walk, where they also included uh, Ha and Ninja, um, Naja. Ha, fa. Okay, I almost got it. Uh, so do we do we want to have a first kickoff on the feedback, Patrick or Alex or Eva, and then we'll open it up. Yes. Hello. So, who is going to kick off so the I, feedback, I Patrick or oh, Eva, sure. Alex? Okay. Alex, go ahead. I'll, I'll follow suit. Uh, um, so, we left together and kind of intended to all walk alone, but in the end, we ended up walking together and um, following the prompts: look to your left, look to your right, um, follow in the footsteps of um, the person ahead of you and uh, mimic their gait. Um, so the instructions were really rich and it was interesting to see how we engaged with each other on this walk. Um, and we did kind of get lost, which is uh, surprising because Weimar is really tiny, but in the end we found our way back a, little, a few minutes late. I personally really loved this work um, and I will uh, listen to it again on my way home uh, this evening. And yeah, I just wanted to, um, to, to thank you for that. There's a lot of mm, different research right now on walking. And I think that what you've um, created is a real um, contribution to that. So I hope to, yeah, I hope that this can be shared with, um, with an audience be, beyond the public arts garage. So thanks for sharing the, the walk with us. Patrick? Yes. So I was in the exact opposite position. I was all alone, walking along a country road and then into the woods. And so this experience um, actually accentuated uh, my isolation, uh, which was really interesting. Uh, as an exercise, it would have normally in the city uh, made me aware of everyone around me and, and connected me in some way with others. But given these circumstances, I felt even more alone. So, so that, that was also interesting uh, to, to consider, um, you know, the, the context and the space in which you're doing this walk uh, definitely affects one's, one's reception. Beyond that, um, I really appreciate it. And it was very clear. I, um, the production uh, this, this time around, the second time was, was a lot cleaner and we could really dive into what it is you wanted us to experience. And I, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I think that uh, Andre, you mentioned something about reworking uh, certain processes in order to reach a sort of a rhythmic structure. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. And maybe if you could just sort of briefly just address that notion of the structure. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, we, we, in our process, we, um, we did a few iterations of the, um, the walk, trying to 
um, moving from the first iteration uh, in, on May 27th, we thought that we needed, originally we thought, like for this uh, second iteration, we thought we should have more uh, instructions and, and slow it down and um, just like uh, for, for in terms of space perception. Um, and, but then we realized listening to it that um, we, we, something was missing about the rhythm and the, the pace about from the first walk that we really, really loved. Um, so we decided to go back. Uh, we asked Fa and Naja's permission uh, to use their voices um, from the, because we did a lot of prompts the first time around. So we used their, we asked their permission if we could use um, their voices in our second iteration. So once we received this this per, their permission, uh, we integrated again uh, the four voices and and. Um, yeah, we tried to achieve a rhythm, a specific rhythm. Um, yeah, did you want to add something to that? Yeah, the rhythm was uh, really Andrea's uh, discovery as she was uh, working on it, and uh, it made a lot of sense when she was once she named it. Um, but um, yeah, Fa and Naja, who contributed so much, um, we we realized we really needed their voices. Uh, we did another recording that just had the two of us, and then we realized listening to it that it became too it became too logical. You tried the two voices, you, it, it was too automatically you wanted to try to follow them. Um, and it took us away from sort of the anti-authority, anti-guide, um, that, that sort of experience of being, yeah, the un, being unsettled, sort of going in any direction or, or uh, anyway, it, we found it more effective with, with the four voices, yeah. I just, you know, um, there, this notion of finding the pace and the, the voices and the bringing back the, the notion of the anti-authority, which I think that we may have forgotten about, um, is very much the kind of the through line in sort of not becoming a dialogue between two people. That would have been a back and forth dialogue. And having the four voices allowed us to be part of the extra um, the ex, you know the the contributions as well. It's it's very interesting when you're working on a project to think about the numerical organization of a group, and certain things will mean certain will will resonate in a certain way if you're two versus three or four, and certain ideas don't work as well numerically. And so I think intuitively, or because of the process that you've you've taken doing the intuitive and the structural was a way of just understanding that the, the how do you capture that notion of the anti-authority numerically as well as content-wise? Two, two, yes, two is, you know, well, we know two is back and forth, one on, one off. It's a, it's a binary kind of situation where we're op uh, often looking for opposites or similarities. But once you start to add more voices, you're kind of expanding just that binary analysis of, of the experience. You know, you are allowed to foray a little farther into it. Um, I just thought I would just thank you for bringing back the notion of uh, the anti-authority, i.e. where does the voice, what, what is, the, what is the power given to the voice in guiding us through our um, experience of the public space? And I think that's central. Um, thank you. Do we have any more comments from anyone about this before we move to the next feedback? Okay, so let's just go. Uh, do we have somebody who's got their hand up? If so, please speak. Um, I just wanted to add like w one little thing, um, also adding to this uh, notion of, of the rhythm and the, the repetition uh, that was um, in, in, this, um, in this version of the, of the walk. And I found like really some strands um, that I could like that, that I felt like attached to and that I kept following and I noticed like, oh, now I'm on a kind of on my own kind of walk. And one strand, for example, there were several like one was just this um, just stop, rest and remember, because I have talked often with people about this. Like, when do you actively remember like memory is like such a such a 
kind of non-tangible thing and 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 just taking this time actively to remember that really really struck me and especially since Weimar is really a city for me of memory I have studied there 10 years ago and and now I'm just like from time to time walk through my own memories and that was really strong for me so I just wanted to share that yeah thank you and Weimar is a city of memories correct I think this is. Uh, I think it was one of you who said uh, Weimar is a city, is a small city uh, with uh, what is it? I can't remember. With big paradoxes. Um, thank you. So could we go to the next uh, feedback about Idun and uh, Natalia, the the project? Um, would somebody like to kick in? Um, Okay, so Emma Cocker and Lena, so, so you give a, a workshop uh, about this. Could, um, I'd like to just maybe ask um, somebody who has not said anything yet and who may not necessarily feel qualified to talk about this quote unquote game thing to just dive in. Oh, here, oh, I've got, we've got two guests here. Um, <laughs> And uh, this is Abuzar, Beheshti, and Farooq. And uh, Abuzar was, uh, are you still doing the, um, the Masters in Design? Yeah, at, here at Concordia. And I invited Abuzar, and you told me you had something to say about this project. This project, actually, that, that was touching my heart, actually, the previous project, uh, the one that I see uh, about Montreal. We uh, lived in Montreal for five years. Uh, the previous project I was narratives and the videos. Uh, it was walking through Montreal, the city of Montreal. Yes. Um, uh, so we lived in Montreal for five years. We experienced actually living in Montreal. We migrated from Iran to Montreal, a different, very different city, Montreal. And it was so touching because we recently moved to Toronto and we missed every details of Montreal. It was actually catching all the details, the video that I watched was catching all the details of Montreal, exploring everything about Montreal. And when you leave Montreal, you will understand where, where, where you have lived and what is the difference between this city and the other cities in Canada, actually. So that was my actual feedback <laughs> about Montreal. Thank you, um, Abuzar. So we kind of got lost in the other project, and 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 so, but that's beautiful because we we need to go away to come back and remember differently. And I would just like to thank you for that. I would like to go back to Idun and Natalia's project about what it is that we take f forward from history, and what seems to have been lost in some sediments because you, you referred to what was left in the boats, the games, et cetera, which are a little bit like the sediments and, and the stones and everything and the dice that we, we repurpose and that we uh, set into motion and the game being very central to, to this, but also the, the, the sense of observation. And I wanna really kind of just bring forward that the importance of observing and I know that this is very central to the work that you do, both of you, observing light, observing the phenomenal uh, phenomenology of light and time passing. And, um, and this is maybe, and I just wanted to, and we see it also in the colony. I just have a question for people about what it is that we pay attention to in terms of these quote unquote natural phenomena in the, uh, in the public space. And uh, you brought this forward very clearly, Natalia and Idun, through your um, your representation of the uh, the stones. Um, I'd like to just get some feedback on that from anybody. Is there anybody out there? If you lift your hand, speak. Well, I, I'd like just I'd just like to. Um, uh, express my appreciation for this, um, as, as uh, Sylvie was saying, uh, an understanding, a deep understanding, 
and sensibility to a layering uh, of these various sediments, these various stratifications of meaning. Um, what, what I especially appreciated in this, uh, in this piece, in, in this presentation, is the juxtaposition of materiality. So you've got the model that you've been working with, and it's a model that was basically experiential, brought into, into a space and, and, and tried over a number of days. And you also have this uh, virtual game, uh, or, or rather a game existing in, in, a, in, a, um, uh, in a non-physical space. Um, and, and so you, you've got a really great marriage in, in a sense of, of um, um, material history but also very much felt and experienced uh, histories, and I am pluralizing here. Uh, I can't wait to, to dive into uh, what you've proposed with the website. And as I wrote in the comments, my, my brain was exploding at that point. I was just like seeing so many possibilities and it's a real palimpsest that you're, that, that, that you're revealing to us and, and thank you. And yes, please do. Um, yes, I also just, I think I, for our project, I was thinking a lot about movement in the body, and I can see in the game this opportunity not just embody my body, but I could embody new kinds of bodies, different bodies, and really play with that in this sort of uh, game world. Um, so I see, I feel inspired by your project in terms of even things we were thinking about with ours and trying to bring in these layering of um, dimensions or just open the mind into even thinking about or thinking about history but then what's the future or, or how to um, sort of play with that and creatively but I think it's just this idea of how do we embody these virtual spaces is really interesting to me from being so physical during this project trying to move against the physical structure now to think how to create that in this other world so yeah thank you um in, in there's a whole set, we didn't forget you margarita uh, barry and mark i i wanted to just segue into this uh sense of movement uh through space and time um and we are going from uh the game and the hypothetical and the and the possibilities of vidun and natalia in from history forward and there's something about the what barry margarita and um and uh mark put forward is and i just want to sort of i don't know if that was intentional but there was a real sense of moving forward all the time constantly taking us forward into space and that movement from the perspective of the absent view you know the the, the author not being uh, visible, except that they, we are really kind of always a little step ahead of what they're wanting to see and uh, what what they're wanting to show. So I don't know if you wanted to sort of just add anything to this uh, movement. It, it, it was quite... It was, it was, it was, it was, okay. Sorry, I should have raised my hand. Uh, um, it was quite different from the first version of the tea house that you that you all did. Maybe you can comment on just the uh, the process of working together and the different formats um, that you used. At least for us in the Zoom audience, for the first version when you were live in uh, in Montreal, um, it it was more difficult to read the different um, layers of the video. I mean, it was like a live performance, and then the like two, <laughs> two leveled uh, layers of action. Um, maybe you can, you and the, um, your colleagues could comment on um, the steps in between what happened in Montreal and you know, what we saw today. Um, I guess to answer Sylvie's question, um, I just had this feeling that we did all these walks together, so it would be nice if the video continued to move us forward. And I also like the idea that even though the walks that you're on are quite um, personal, reflection-wise, that it's your walk also. Um, and then to answer the question that 
was just asked in terms of process. I guess it's very interesting for our group because for part of it, we had Margarita here. And then for the second part of it, we did not. So um, also, I think the way that in Margarita's video, the way that she added video footage of the first tea service that we did, and I think she's wearing the same dress I was wearing. Is that correct? Yes, OK. We share clothes, if nobody realized that. Um, I thought it was really cool that on this end, we got to see what you saw in Weimar the first time uh, in the video. So I got to see how uh, in, in, like crazy it looked. <laughs> uh, but maybe Margarita can expand on the process of what it was like uh, in Weimar for this part. Well, 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 well. Oh. Okay, I would say that this really was about presence and absence, because for the first one, I was very present. I was in Montreal, and we were present in each other's presence. And in the second one, it almost felt like we were reading each other's minds. We didn't have a lot of time to talk. I missed, I think, every single one of our meetings to the point where, um, bless you, Mark and Barry, uh, we were all worried about it happening at all. And yet at the same time, because we had had that gift of being in each other's presence, and we always did sort of share clothes mentally, um, <laughs> it, we, we came up with the same sorts of output with the same kinds of input. And I think um, for me, that's really important, this sort of reflecting, um, I would say that I don't know if I, I can speak for Barry, but I feel like we reflect each other, the three of us, uh, imperfectly and differently with our individualities. But because we, we think about the same themes, they mirror each other sort of in the way that um, is happening here, because there's this endless loop between the plants, this screen, the parliament of plants, and reflecting back like the dress to Montreal. And I'm, I'm sort of playing with that constantly. I hope it's not distracting, but that's sort of um, a process-based way of, of answering methodologically what it is uh, that we were doing both in Montreal and in this video. And I love how the Montreal version was this sort of maximalist, in-your-face, uh, performative art thing that might have been hard to read in video. And then the second part video was a very clean, quiet, and meditative um, work on the same thing. So I think it's uh, opposite sides of the, the panopticon. I mean, I also think it's funny that over there, I've, I've been there, so I know you're sort of in the fourth space, beautiful panopticon. And over here, we're in this very intimate Weimar plant opticon, passing tea in the colonial tea house. So I just wanted to call attention to those reflections and extremes and mirrors that are happening and how fun it is. <laughs> I think it's this one that's on. It's working, yeah. Um, just very briefly in like literally bullet point, uh, three or four themes that you said that you were alluding to, Margarita? Because you mentioned uh, something that we were working on these themes. So could you just give them in like bullet point? Sure, sure, sure. Turn on my turn, on, turn off yours. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, ecology and the environment obviously is a theme that we were all very concerned with. Uh, borders and um, neighborhood, sort of this feeling of belonging would be a second one. And then I would say the third one really is layers of history and our connections to local and personal histories, because there's sort of um, what isn't so visible but is alluded to are layers of history from the Chinatown history in Montreal. So there's this history of ethnic migration, which, um, you know, Barry has been very involved in, uh, to my actual migration here to Europe backwards and marks um, there to, to Montreal from Europe. And finally, um, 
Yeah, this sort of uh, synthesis between when Sylvie looked up, I forgot I was what I was going to say because I knew I needed to stop. <laughs> yeah, it's it's fine. Thank you. I am looking at the time, and I know that I want to also make sure that we have feedback on um, on the the last uh, project as well. Um, thank you for that. I'm just one of the um, one of the things that I did notice was that almost uh, except towards the very end that there were no people in the very beginning of your of your foray into the space and only gradually did we start to see human activity. So I think that's just something about um, um, tipping tipping the, the, the focus of allowing us to discover that where we thought that we think that we're in a city and and where the people are usually forward and the architecture and then you tipped it and just brought forward the nature as the introduction to to um, being destabilized. Um, thank you for that. So I'd like to maybe just move to the very last project, although that we did get some kind of discussion on it. Sorry, could I just add something very, very quickly? Oh, yeah, please and, and do. Just for this group, just um, you mentioned the the notion of belonging, and I love the the fascinating contrast be um, between that gentle sense of belonging that you brought across so powerfully, and and the harshness of the reference at the end to borders and the the possibility of not being able to cross those borders, and that there was a kind of a sinister, dark undercurrent. Um, that followed that sort of gentle, beautiful sense of belonging, and I thought that was that was very powerful. Um, I just wanted to say that, and and that it connects back to your other piece, um, with that kind of social critique underlying it. Um, so thank you very much for that. Thank you. Just for a very that quick out. question, uh, because I don't know if it was Mark or Barry, but you were actually filming my home. <laughs> so when you were saying un unapproachable, that was the the middle building. The architecture was that part of the your comment where the tree had fallen on the street and made made a block was that was the, the architecture part of the untouchable comment or was it just randomly on the street that's the bixie station that i often go get a bixie at and that particular day i decided to go to a different one and i heard the tree crash onto the station as i was going home so um i could have died for this artwork i want everybody to know <laughs> But your house being in it is unintentional, but it's very cool that it's there. Oh, okay, right, right, right. No, it's an unintentional. Um, maybe the nature really hated the architecture of your house, so it decided to fall down and almost kill me. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Well, the Parliament of Plants and the Parliament of Trees have spoken. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, and if we could just wrap up now with our very last uh, presentation. Um, did, and I know that you, you spoke with Taika and um, Karina and Margrita. Uh, is there anything that you wanted to add concisely before we go to feedback or would you like feedback right away? Taika? Taika, do you have any? Launch into feedback, yes. So I'd like to open it up for feedback. Yeah, so we're just going to open up the feedback right away. Um, once again, um, any hands up, please just speak. Yes, no. I'd, I'd just like to say, yeah, there's just somebody in the back there. I think it's Victoria. Yeah. Would you like I'm to hiding. grab the phone? The phone, the mic. Hiding back here. Hiding back here, I don't think I'm gonna. No? I'm, yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, I'm hiding. Um, I wanted to say how happy I am that you decided to continue to work with the colonnades because it felt like there was so much that you wanted to continue exploring when you first started there. And um, the all of the layers of the ways in which you wanted both your as your group to keep exploring and for us to keep observing um, really came through with what you ended up presenting today or the process that you continue to be in from then.
till today. So thank you, and I'm happy, and I'm happy for you because I know that in, with that, with that wonderful expression in French, uh, uh, laissez sur votre fin, like you felt like you couldn't, you didn't quite get to what you needed to get to because of well, lack of time, etc. But also just that the pure joy of standing in front of the colony. It's just just because, just because. So some of that was captured. Um, and came through in some of the video that you ended up going back and shooting and showing more of that experience of the connection between here and Northern Ireland also, which we kind of got a sense of in the first one, but it really came through um, in ways that didn't the first time around. So great, lovely. So I have just more, I bet I know, well, I'll just, I'll, I'll wrap it there and let others jump in, yeah. Patrick. Yeah, th thanks. I, I absolutely agree with Victoria's uh, comments. Um, the the initial the initial uh, exploration into the colonnades in May, I remember, felt very um, symmetrical and, and focused on the colonnades, and, and we we looked into them and saw a long tunnel. But you started already exploring exits and, and weaving, potential weaving between, between the columns. And this time around, the weaving went, uh, well, extremely far. And, and, and you, 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 you've connected places. You've connected Northern Ireland, Montreal. You've connected ancient, recent, and proximal uh, uh, colonnades. As you mentioned, there's a colonnade just outside of the fourth space. Um, and and I, I really appreciate that you, you continue Continued with the uh, writing aspect as well, um, which was uh, very clear, a lot clearer this time because because of the technology and you know, we, we weren't outside. Um, and just one last thing on the on the writing, uh, I'd, I'd like to commend you on the collaborative, uh, ludic, playful uh, exercise in in. in uh, in the poetry exercise where you you basically have created colonnades uh, within the, a multi-layered po poem, right? You've created these empty spaces like an uh, espace troué that, that, that you've uh, inhabited with, with those columns going across the three voices. So thank you. I wanted to also point out that when we had discussions and feedback after the first one, I was very intrigued by the sense of um, are we just because we were brought forward the first time through it and uh and i just said we really need to include the verticality of the of the observation and i i think that this is just one thing that sometimes we forget as human beings is to do just tip your head up i mean kids will do it they'll lie down and they'll look at the trees from lying down or etc and we sometimes keep the same, and I mentioned this maybe before, we often keep the same kind of relationship of the body verticality to the space horizontal. And we don't often engage our verticality continuing into the verticality of space. Do you understand what I mean? So, so there's just a, you know, how do we kind of just use our, our atlas, like literally, that's the part here at the back, the bone, the atlas. How do we use our atlas to look at the atlas of the world? And if we kind of just start connecting the, the, the mobility of the of perception that we are seeing, and I just want to commend also something about the the quality of the video documentation and the artwork and the web, the web. I mean, it's just, it's, it's very stunning. It's very, I love the black and white and the grays and the, the hues that you chose. So aesthetically, I think that you have, I think you've really found uh, how to let the leakage of the colonnade into your own aesthetic of the project. So I don't know who you filmed with, but the, it's sparse, just enough it was beautiful i just want to say we filmed it ourselves on our iphones i think you should get sponsored by apple <laughs> i uh i come from the background of literature actually uh because of my country iran so because of many years of thousand years of aniconism uh, we developed our literature around poetry. We developed our art around poetry. So now I understand when you uh, talk about the game of poetry, I understand it very well. The 
everything about the poetry is uh, giving space to some words and get and uh, you know hiding some others and giving space to people to understand and digest and guess what is going on in other parts. It is about the city as well. Uh, to giving a space to something to shine, to, to be understood and get rid of the else, the other, uh, other parts of the thing. So the game of poetry actually was very touching for me as, because uh, I think it can be expanded and resonated to the city as well. It's funny because a poem that we were going to include that was one of our inspirations was the Rumi poem about the Chinese and the, the Greek walls. So yeah. that we want to include that on the site. <laughs> And once again, thank you for leaving traces of um, inclusivity that, I, and this is one of the things that I mentioned when I was speaking with Martin earlier this week about how what we're doing here, all of us, is creating a kind of a contamination process and that it will be carried not just through us, but through the people with whom we share our structures and ideas and um, you know, how to fill in the legends, how to continue the letter writing, how to play the games, um, how to move forward and rediscover and discover our own cities through the gaze that you have uh, provided, even though we know that when we step into those spaces, they will never look the same as the first time that you shared them with us, how we can reuse the uh, soundscapes um, and how, you know, I mean, there's just so many possibilities and potentials, how we can, um, lay our dreams and collect them <clears throat> through other people. So I, I just want to thank everyone here for the amazing amount of work that you have done. <clears throat> I hope that we can continue learning from each other. I've learned an enormous amount from being with you and, and sharing this process. Uh, it has made me want to kind of just dive so much deeper into everything and to uh, the places uh, now I'm going to want to know more about Lima and about Sao Paulo and I'm going to want to know a little bit more about Iranian poems and you know getting lost in the library um, you know the colonnades speaking to each other um, midsummer being something that we can carry with us for a long time and not just when it happens in nature um, so there's a lot of transportation going on, and I think everyone here, I don't know if anybody else wanted to just share from, from abroad, because I, when I think the people here, I'm thinking all of you also who participated in this project, as you know, this is, um, an ama this has been an amazing, an amazing experience. I thank you all. And, um, I thank Fourth Space enormously too. And Patrick, when Patrick and I first started talking about doing this, we had no idea that we were going to just, it was going to happen so quickly, this kind of course we kind of just wanted to share with Weimar and, um, and Queens. So thank you also in Belfast, thank you also in Weimar for doing everything, making it possible. Um, so it, does anybody want yeah, to- Yeah, thank you. Um, I also find it extremely enriching. So thank you so much. It's been a pleasure and a privilege to be a part of this. Yeah, I would also um, say so. Can, can you hear me, everybody? Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, so um, I would, uh, first of all, um, it's one practical thing. <laughs> we still have our, our website with the map, uh, and I want to just re-engage in that, but I send you out um, an, an email I have thought about to integrate that into documentation. And then um, as a kind of a, a, a concluding words for the, for the seminar, yeah, I'm also like super happy that you all made it possible that it could happen. And for me, the whole uh, public arts garage is an experience, um, as I heard from other people, but also from my own experience of like really deeply engaging with the differences that we all have and not only being inspired by them, but also really like going through the trouble of them and, and really deeply engaging with, with and learning from what is different and, and how we can move on from that. And there was one conversation that I had with somebody who, who said, uh, don't think that the world in your mind is the world. And this is something that I really take from the public arts garage. And there are so many worlds um, and just engaging with those 
uh, different perspectives, I think, is something that enriches artistic practice, but also designing a course and also curating and many other things in life. So I just, for me, I will take this away from the Public Arts Garage and I hope that it also resonates with uh, some of you. So thank you very much for that. I'm happy to echo that uh, statement. Can you hear me online? Um, at the beginning of today, uh, in the first round of reflections, Victoria said there was an equal amount of preparation and spontaneity. And I think that that really sums up uh, the work in this project. So speaking from kind of the planning side, and I think I speak for Martin here as well, you know, we put so much effort and, you know, thought and consideration into the planning. But at the same time, there was so much spontaneity and just for me as, as, a, as a teacher, um, this was very different from any other teaching experience I've ever had because it forced me to be open to spontaneity and to just the different impulses that people brought with them in this course. So I'm very, very thankful to, to all of you. And um, Victoria also said it was about saying yes and seeing where it all will go. And that was indeed um, what happened here, saying yes and look at where we've, we've gone. So thank you all. I hope that uh, some kind of publication or work will continue out of this because it's so rich. I know that there's documentation from Forspace, but it would be one of my great wishes that we leave a lot of traces of what has happened here. So um, I will keep speaking with Patrick and other people about how we can kind of just capture this capture all of the amazing um, layers of work that we have seen today. So thank you for everyone's great projects and many thanks for the organizers. We'll thank you back. I think we're at mealtime um, here in Montreal. Are you, is it probably a peritif over there, wherever you are? Drinks? No? Um, so I, is this the, the end? We're going to, Keely, do you want to have a kind of a final thing? Does, no? She says no. <laughs> yeah, thank you also, Keely and, and Taylor, like who were always in, in the background and did such great work to keep it all going. So just not to forget that. Yeah. All right. Um, well, I think it's mealtime for us. And we're going to just, we're not going to close down this whole operation. We will be kind of just, uh, looking forward to reading your papers that are due the 15th. I know we extended it, so it extends into everybody's vacation time, but hell, so much has been, it'll be a breeze. Um, I can just tell. We look forward to reading them as we float on some kind of salt water, hopefully. Um, all right, thank you, everyone. I'm going to just sign off here from Montreal and invite the Montreal participants to go and get your lunchbox. And we're going to we're going to stick around here and talk as much as we can. Um, and if you want to sort of just stay with us, anybody, then uh, maybe we'll just hook up again uh, after lunch. Is that okay? Yeah. Don't have my glasses. Is that a yes? yes. That's a yes. Okay. So thank you. Thank you so much, everybody, from everyone here at Force Space. We just want to say congratulations on your projects. And we also want to remind you that the stream of this finissage is currently available on our YouTube channel, Concordia University Force Space, or something like that. Um, if you need some extra help locating it, just ask one of us, and we'll show you where you can find it. Congratulations again.